Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is called Separated by Time. Now I love making pads and pigments. It's one of my favorite kind of sounds to make in pigments because it's so nicely set up for it. So I kind of imagine being separated by time, obviously, but like maybe in a spatial kind of context or something like that. So here we go. All right, so that was separated by time. It is a little bit CPU intensive, I will say that up front, but uh, hopefully your computer is a little bit better than mine. So here we go, let's go into the synth and let's turn off our effects here. So we're gonna be using the utility engine, let's turn that off. We're using engine two, let's turn that off. And we're using engine number one to keep this one on. So basically let's take a listen to what this first engine sounds like without any effects. You might be thinking, what is that? So those are kind of those like little beeps that kind of sound in the background, kind of as a texture kind of thing there. So what's happening here is we're using a triangle wave and really this is the only oscillator we're using in this engine. And as you can see this volume is kind of just bouncing up and down and kind of just doing its own thing. It's kind of getting louder and quieter at a random rate. So let's take a look at that for the first thing. So this is getting changed by random number one. So let's go into a random and see what's happening here. So this one is going to be on the sample and hold sample from the white noise and then be triggered by the clock at a rate of one over eight. So now I have these rise and falls a little bit up. So the rise is gonna be 182 milliseconds and then the fall is gonna be 196 milliseconds. Now, if you're unfamiliar what those are, if you look in, into this graph here, you can see that the change in values almost, ha they have curves to them, right? They're not like steps in squares, kind of not like a sample and hold as it should look like but these rise and falls basically add the curves if a note rises to a different value or if it falls to a lower value, that's where we're gonna add in those uh, curves there. So that's kind of how it slides through the volume. It doesn't really snap to the different volumes. Now we also have this right over here. If you go to our course, we have this random one as well. If you look at the random one, this is going to be to a couple of different things. So this first one here, this AN01 volume is this one that we're talking about here. Then we have this engine one course over here. So let's take a look at this here. So this course is getting modulated by a very, very small amount. It's what's changing the pitch of our notes, right? So I'm hitting one note here. Now, if you look over here to this tune section, we have this quantize on and we go to the edit here. Now, this one's gonna be almost always on by default, your root note. So if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have this one engaged, which is basically adding that perfect fifth if you go seven semitones up. So it's kind of gonna work in a lot of different situations with a lot of chords and it's not gonna sound out of key. And then also for this engine here, we also have unison two voices here. The detune is at 3% and the stereo is at 100%. And setting to filter number two, which we're gonna get to in a second, which is the MS-20. So moving on from this engine here, we have engine number two, and this is going to be sampled. Now this one's gonna be basically the meat and potatoes of our sound here. The other stuff is kind of just uh, accents or kind of just adding a little pizzazz to the patch here. So we're gonna be using granular synthesis on this one here. Now, before we get into that, take a look at this little knob over here. We have a built-in filter here. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but it comes in quite handy as to not burn up another filter, which is really cool. So we have 22% high pass selected for this one. The unison is gonna be two, detune 3% and stereo 100%. We're not changing the coarse tuning or anything like that. That's gonna be left alone. Sending to filter number one, which is the comb, which we're gonna to get to in just a moment. So this sample right over here is called hull breach, which I guess kind of works perfectly for a spatial type of thing, I suppose. Now this is gonna go in granular friendly in this folder here, and it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down hull breach. Make sure to double click that one there. 
Now the start is going to be at 0.388. And for this one, I felt like I didn't really need to randomize the start position. It didn't seem necessary, so I didn't do that. Now we're going to be using granular over here. The density is going to be 25 hertz. This is going to be default left alone. And the size for the time is going to be 409 milliseconds. So right off the bat, even just with this engine 2 sample with no effects, we're kind of at a good spot already. So before we go to the utility, let's take a look at our envelopes here, because generally with pads, they have a very long attack and then a long release and so on and so forth. You can mess with the sustain. But anyway, so for this envelope, I had the attack at 2.53 seconds, the decay three, uh, 300 milliseconds, sustain one, and then the release at 3.59 seconds. Decay curve, negative four, and then the attack curve at negative 0.800. Because I always feel like I kind of want a little bit of a, of a bump here on the attack. Sounds a little bit more natural to me, as opposed to it going like a concave kind of thing. Okay, so let's go to the utility engine over here and turn this on and see what we're dealing with here. So this is going to sound like this. So again, this utility engine's adding kind of a little bit more texture, a little bit more stuff to work with, so on and so forth here. So for the first one is going to be Ghost. Let's turn off the sub here real quick. And it's kind of just that sound there. It's kind of it's kind of adding a little bit more harmonics to it, so it doesn't sound so uh, so empty, I suppose. Even though space is empty, kind of weird how that works out. This one's getting sent to filter number two. So this sample ghost is found in the Atmos, and it's one, two, three, the fourth one down. No change for any of the stuff here. Just kind of leave that alone. And then next up, we have the sub oscillator over here, down one octave by default, and this is going direct out. And this is also a macro number two, which is conveniently labeled sub. Because sometimes you want to have some of that nice low end in a pad, but maybe if you already have that, it's nice to have that on a macro. Now, all three of these together sound something like this. Now, those kind of beeps on the background that we're kind of hearing, they're cool, but maybe you don't like them, which I have these on a uh, on a macro right over here, just in case you want them or you don't want them. I thought they were kind of cool, so I figured I would leave them in there. So uh, let's go over to our effects here and see what's going on here using all of the uh, banks here. So FXB, let's turn this one off over here. Let's check out number A or letter A. So first things first, it hits a delay. And just so we, before we get into that, I do want to point out here that this filter routing, the filter one is going to FXA and filter number two is going to FXB. If we click this here, it's going to split, right? So the signal out of filter number one is going to FX bank A, which is hitting these three and then going to the output. And then for filter number two, it's hitting F FX bank B and then going to the output. So the output of FXA is not going into FX bank B. They're basically independent. They're going to be parallel to each other. So, because that, that is important for this patch here. So next up after the delay, we go into a shimmer reverb. So the pitch shift is going to be seven semitones. So basically a perfect fifth there for that pitch shift th uh, there. Feedback 0 0.500, size 50%, modulation one, the high pass 200 hertz, low pass 7K, ducking zero, stereo width 0 0.75. And then for the dry wet, it's going to be at amount of 40 with the FX knob fully engaged. Next up, we have a chorus. And I've really been a fan of this reverb-like preset. I think it sounds really cool, but especially only at low values, right? So the low value is going to be 12%, so 0.12, and it's also tied to the FX macro at full per... For, 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 oh my god. Full value is going to be 12%. And then rate, 1.45, delay, 20 milliseconds, depth, 0 0.103 milliseconds, feedback, 0 0.9, voices, 3, not square, and it's stereo. I don't know why I'm reading those because it's a preset, but anyway... Moving on from there, we have FXB. Now, if you look over here, FXB is getting received from filter number two. So that's basically going to be this noise here, this ghost, and then this uh, beeping kind of sound here, which is important because without this on here, kind of notice the beeps, right? 
they kind of jump out at you a little bit. So the first thing I wanted to hit it with was a compressor. So that's why it's kind of uh, nice to process these in parallel, right? Because I can focus just on the the delay, the shimmer, and the chorus for that kind of pad and then the noise, which is cool. And then also go separately with those beeps kind of sound and then process those without processing the other stuff. So that's why it's kind of nice to do parallel processing. So first thing that we hit is the compressor. So they're not really jumping at us, out at us anymore. It's kind of hitting maybe negative five for gain reduction. Maybe negative six at some points here, but anyway, the threshold's kind of up to taste because it really depends on your input signal, but negative 10.7 for my patch here, the ratio is gonna be two over one, so kind of a gentle uh, compression. You can always go four to one if it's a little bit too much if you'd like to. And then the output gain I brought it up 1.41 and then also added the makeup right over there. And full dry wet attack is gonna be two milliseconds and the release 50 milliseconds. Next up, this is gonna be cool because we have the stereo pan here. So now this is going to be modulated from random number one, the same one that we changed over here for our course tuning and then also our volume. So we're using that same modulator to change the wideness of this stereo pan here. So it's gonna always be moving at one over two, so a half bar, but the amount it moves is gonna be that modulation. So it's kind of a cool concept over there. And the amount is gonna be 0.36. So you can't really place where exactly those beeps are coming from because sometimes they can be a little right heavy, sometimes they can be a little low or left heavy and they kind of just move around, sometimes they're more narrow. So that's what's really cool about the stereo pan because you can't really predict as much where it's gonna be. And then last but not least, we put those through a delay over here, and this is gonna be one over four, and the fine is zero milliseconds, feedback 0.352, stereo spread 0 0.040, high pass frequency 20, low pass 20K, and then the dry wet amount is going to be at full maximum vol, <laughs> oh my God, full value of the FX macro at 0.37, which is 37%. So yeah, anyway, so for our macros down over here, we have the beeps that we already went through here. So if you don't like those beeps, you can turn those off by turning this macro fully to the left. If you want more, turn it to the right. And then we have the sub, which we go to the send, then we go to our utility engine and we look at this volume here. And this is macro number two at 0.83. So that's kind of the range that this knob has to work with. Now, it really depends if you want the sub there, it's kind of nice with it, so without it. Kind of crap down my CPU there. So yeah, that's the interesting part too. So if you have some low end or a sub or a bass already going, you can easily take that out, which I, that's why I like putting it on a macro because I don't know what you have. Maybe you got some cool low end stuff going and you just want the texture. So you can easily just remove the sub if you want a sub and you don't want to add another bass. That's why that's there. So totally up to you. And then we have this detune over here. So this is kind of interesting. kind of just makes it very, very dissonant with quite a healthy value. So basically we can click this third one over here, which is the D2. Now this is going to be engine one fine, which is this guy over here that is gonna be uh, changing. So all the way to the right, it's going to change this knob basically all the way to the right. And then last but not least, let's click back this M3 here. We have the SG2 random pitch, which is the sample engine over here. And it's gonna be this random pitch here. So kind of just modulating the random grains, pitch, so on and so forth. Yeah, pretty interesting. So low values are gonna keep things a lot more cohesive. If you really wanna detune the crap out of it, then crank it all the way to the top. And then we have our last but not least, our FX, which is very convenient. So we click this over here, then we have FX A1, which is the delay, and we looked over here, so that's gonna be at a maximum value. I hate how you can't look at it like that. At 
0.18 and then we have the shimmer which is going to be 0 0.40 and then the chorus 0.12 what else do we have here and then we have fx3 dry wet which is going to probably yeah this last delay here which is going to be 0.37 i guess i could just read them right here but anyway yeah so 37 percent for that so if you like this patch and you'd like to get it for free, there's a link in the video description below. You can click it and it can be yours. And you can be also separated by time because it is a lonely time in the world. Or outside of the world, you know what I'm saying? Alright, thanks so much for watching, hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video.